if you look inside, let me take it inside there. So the power is up there. There was no access panel here. So if there was ever a problem with this, God knows how it would have been resolved without obviously taking all this out. So right, so today's efforts, we are down in Mitcham, which is far, far away from me. It's taken me about two hours to get here, working with my boy Cara again. So I'm gonna be giving me a hand in uh, another system conversion. So again, we've got all micro ball pipes here, so we're not gonna be power flushing this system. We're gonna do the conversion and then he's just gonna whack his magnet lens on it so that we're not gonna be, we don't wanna push any extra dirt through the system. The boiler that's coming out is actually, what's happening, Cara? What's happening, bro? We've got a Ecotech Plus 618, which is how old? 2015. So it's not that old, but I think they've been having a few problems with it. Let's see what it's like inside. Doesn't look in the worst condition, so this is probably going to be a good one to keep for spares. It's a rental property, so we're going to be putting in an ECA 30 kilowatt combi boiler. Luckily, we've got hot and cold coming from here, so shouldn't have any problem getting through this worktop. The well, the valve configuration or the pipe configuration, um, you can see for yourself. <laughs> it's a bit of a hybrid system it, by the looks of it. We've got a valent boiler with what looks like one of them old Ariston or heat line valve there. And that's potentially, that looks like a Baxi valve. So it looks like they've basically tried to bodge a few different bits. Don't know why you wouldn't use the, the valves that come with the boiler on the boiler when you're trying to mix and match different valves, but hey ho, it is what it is. So yeah, this is coming up. The gas at the moment is in 15, so we're gonna see where that goes to. If we can find it in 22, we'll try and try and upsize it where we can. If not, we'll see what the working pressure is on the boiler. The boiler's only got a 15 mil gas connection anyway, so if it's sufficient, if it's like 22 up there, then it's only a small leg of 15, then we should be fine, but we'll check the working pressures. Hopefully that's all okay. I'm gonna go upstairs and have a look at the air and cupboard and see what I'm getting myself into for the conversion. All right, here we are, air and cupboard. So all the pipe configuration actually looks fairly neat in here, fairly straightforward. So I'm gonna try and do as tidy of a job as I can in here. Obviously we've got carpet here, so I'll see if I can lift up the carpet and try and do as much for the linking out under the floorboards as I can. But main thing is just get this out, get it neat and tidy as much as possible and get the system up and running. So because it's a system boiler, there's no F and E tank, but there will obviously be a cold water storage tank up in the loft. So let's get a drain off. Where's the drain off? Oh, don't tell me there's no, oh, that's got to be, yeah, cold feed, drain off on there. So start draining the cold water storage tank down and the cylinder. It looks like the cylinders had some weeps as well here. So it's a good thing it's coming out. And then once it's all drained out, see, start taking stuff out cutting stuff out yeah and seeing what we need to do so yeah let's get on with it okay so just trying to identify what pipes are what here so these two look like they're heating pipes they're going straight up this pipe here which has got an iso valve on it couldn't initially figure out what it was but where i've gone upstairs let me show you oh, right so just up here in the loft and it's a system boiler but the FNU tank's still full of water. So what we found is, let me just turn that this way a bit, the, that pipe with the ISO valve on the end of it, that was the old cold feed for the heating system. So we just tested it, we opened the ISO valve and this, the FNU tank started <clears throat> draining down and obviously the ball valves the water still on so it started filling so we've confirmed that's the old cold feed so we can cut that out and get this drained out that's literally just a whole lot of stagnant water just sitting in there and then we've got two outlets coming off of the cold water storage tank so one of them is going to be feeding the cylinder the other one's going to be feeding the rest of the property now there is a loft room up here but we've confirmed that there's no bathrooms or anything like that up here so I was thinking in case there was I might have to link it out up here 
But where there's no water supply upstairs, we can link it out in the air and cupboard, so that should be fine. So I'm going to leave those two 50mm pipes, the ones on the left, where they are. Uh, I'm not going to touch them because I'm pretty sure those are heating pipes. We'll confirm it when we start taking the pipes, if we can, if we can get under the floorboards. But in the meantime, we're going to turn the water off. We've identified the majority of the pipes, start draining stuff down, and then go from there. And by process of elimination, that opening pipe there, that would have been the old vent pipe for the heating side. So that's redundant. That pipe coming down here, which kind of has got the holes on, that's the old f &E, um, cold feed pipe from the f &E tank. So we're just draining that down now because, well, it should have been drained down before anyway. And then we can got a stopcock here which is a bit seized. There might be one on that actually where you sit. Cara, did you manage to turn this stopcock or was it seized? Which one? This one here. Have you just turned the water no, off no, outside? I'll turn it from downstairs. Okay, cool. Alright, so he's turned that off from downstairs. So what we'll then do is we'll find out if we can link it out under the floor because we've only need to link out that over to this one. Because there's no bathrooms, only cold water services upstairs. So we just need to link these two out. This is gonna get cut and capped under the floor. But this is going to get removed and these two are going to stay because they're heating pipes and then this will do sort of the rest of conversion as we go along. Make sense? It does make sense. Cool, let's crack on. So cylinder and everything's all drained out now. We've identified all the pipes, what's what. Good thing is the boiler's got its own fuse spur downstairs. So what I was initially going to do is with this 3 amp fuse spur, I was going to find out where the power is in here link it out and then that will be our power going for downstairs. But it looks like that fuse spur was literally just for the wiring center and the boiler's got its own fuse spur downstairs. So we can literally just rip everything out of here, take the cables out the back of there, already disconnected to the immersion here coming out of there. So I'll take the outlet cable out of there and then just basically rip out the whole wiring center and be done with it. Okay, so that says three amps on it clearly, but you know what I found in there. 13 amp. Cylinder is all been disconnected. So cut the bypass bit off there. Cut the primary flow section off there. Hot water side disconnected. Cylinder return has been disconnected. The cold feed to there has been disconnected. So now wiring center is all off as well. So I can literally now just lift this off and take it outside and then take off the carpet here, see what the floorboards are like and try and do as much as linking out under the floorboard as we can. So I've capped off all the vent pipes, the old cold feed there. Got to sort out the hot water feed up there as well. But these floorboards are a nightmare. They're tongue and groove. So it's not as easy as just lifting them up. We're gonna have to get the multi-tool out. You can see down in there. So I've got to cut the tongues out and then see what section I can lift up. I'm hoping, considering the way the cut's kind of there, joists are running this way so hopefully that should give me a free run to get this over to there link it out straight underneath if they're going that way then yeah it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit more work but yeah i'm gonna start by cutting the tongues out take up a couple of boards and then see what's what so i've managed to take up this one bit of floorboard and i found that the primary flow and returns are actually coming down there and these two pipes they're actually going that way so what i'm going to try and do here I'm going to use this bad boy and cut these two pipes here, cut this floorboard here and here. Luckily the joists are all running that way and the pipes are already there so I don't need to run a new feed from there to there. I'm going to cut that there and there, try and take this off once I've cut these off so that I've got two long basic tails coming out so I can lift the floorboard up and then try and do the linking out underneath there and then just put the boards back down and then all this can all get cut out because that's all going to be redundant. Progress update, taken up, just took up all those floorboards. Just makes it easier because these two were pinned down onto this bit of batten. So now when I can cut that, those will drop out there. Got a primary flow, got a primary, sorry, heating flow, heating return. That's gonna link onto this pipe. That's gonna link onto this pipe. There's still a bit of water sitting in there. So we're gonna press these on. So all I've got to do now, I think, regarding this side, I'm probably going to have to sweat this elbow off, I think, because that there's another joist running about here. 
and or a bit of batten or something. Yeah, a bit of batten running that way. And obviously I can't get this off because it's going underneath the skirt in here. So I don't wanna mess around with that too much. So I'm gonna probably sweat these two off if I can. There's still water in the pipes. If not, I'll see if I can get my, oh, no, actually. What I can feel there is that that's actually coming off of a bend. So cutting that is out of the question. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna have to sweat it off and then see what I can do with that. All right, that's fine. Try and work out a plan. So I've got my bits of pipe mocked up here, how I'm gonna link it out. Obviously that's going at a slight angle, so I've had to put a bit of a kick on the pipes to then be able to loop them around. Now we are pressing, but I can't get the jaws straight on there. So this is where my angle jaws are gonna be making the maiden appearance. So I'll put the sling over it from there. Angle jaws will basically clamp on from the bottom and press that in place. I'll try to video it if I can. That's been pressed. So you can see it's got the crimp marks there. So that's done the job. The good thing about these is you can actually angle the jaws a full 180. So let me put the press gun here and stand it up. And let me get these in one second. <coughs> So yeah, that's how the jaws sit on there. And then that, you can literally angle it whichever way. So the REMS ones, you can only angle the, well, the initial ones on the REMS, you can only angle them up to 45 degrees, which would have been for about there, which wouldn't have worked here. But with these ones, I can literally go, yeah, the full sort of, probably more than 180 actually. So handy bit of kit. I've waited, I ordered these back in, well, I pre-ordered it back in, November, December last year, and I literally got them a couple of weeks ago, and we're in July now, so yeah, it's taken seven months to get hold of them, so, and they're all pretty much sold out already, so if you want them, get in touch with andy at pressit.co.uk, and I think they're still doing a pre-order, or you just have to put your name on the list, and then they'll get sent out to you once they come in. They are about cost me about 450 quid, so they're not cheap, but in situations like this, that 450 quid, it's definitely worth it for me. So that's the heating side all linked out. So we've got our primary flow, which is this pipe here. So that's looping back onto the heating flow pipe. And then we've got the primary return, which is then looping back onto the heating return. So that's all done. Floorboards on this side can go back down. Now I'm going to tackle the right hand side, which is the domestic side. So I've got to cap the hot water pipe under the floor as far back as I can, and then link these two up under the floor here as well if possible. I should be able to because the joists are all running this way. So depending on where there's a joist there, it looks like I'll probably just take a measurement there and then just do, they should be evenly spaced out. So take up some of the boards here, find out where those two are and try and link them out under the floor as well. So there wasn't a joist there, so I've had to cut it there. The next joist is a little bit further on. So I'll probably put a bit of batten underneath here, screw that down. So we've got a bit of support on this side. So those are the two heating pipes going up to the loft. Cut everything there. I'm gonna compression cap everything up there as far as I need to. Cold has been linked out under there. So there's our cold. And I'm just gonna cap that off and then just put all the boards down, cap that off, and then we're all done in the air and covered. Then I can go and give Carl a hand downstairs. Right, second part of this job. There's a hidden shower pump. So apparently, this was all tiled in and cars had to knock the tile out obviously to gain access to the shower pump. But if you look inside, let me take you inside there. So the power is up there. There was no access panel here. So if there was ever a problem with this, God knows 
how it would have been resolved without obviously taking all this out. So I've got to link all this out as well. Luckily, we've got some push fit stuff underneath there. So I'm just going to try and do the same. This use the same push fits and pop the flexes off, take the copper tails out of there, and then just link the hot and colds out together. All right, slight change of plan. Cora's going to take over the shower pump, and I'm going to go downstairs to get the wiring done in the boiler. So that's my forte. This is his, his forte. Tag teaming. And we're done. Conversion's done. The boiler's done. Now, this is obviously a lot more neater than the last conversion video that I've done where we had pipes obviously still up the floor, up on the side. These two pipes have stayed there because their heating pipes going to upstairs. Everything up there is capped off even though it's redundant in case there's a little bit of water that might drip down, put caps everywhere. All the other rest of the conversion is done under the floor. So that's done because I know a few of you love to have them on at some of my videos and that's absolutely fine because the interaction just gets me more and more exposure so carry on it doesn't bother me but not every job is going to be perfect this job is a good one because it's completely clear here some jobs you got to work with what you do and you guys know that I shall oops the good the bad the ugly everything I've got nothing to hide so you see all my jobs real life plumbing and heating as I do it now I haven't shown much of the boiler oh sorry all right let's so azim and Kara have been working on the boiler so they've got this all done so the boiler's all done there was already a cold feed coming up there for the old filling loop hot literally they just took from there and bring it straight up there so boiler's done stats on the wall it's all been piped up it's all been commissioned tested everything tenants are really happy they've now got instant hot water they've got better hot water pressure Azim's happy because he can go home now. I'm happy because it's half five and I've got to get back from Mitchum and Kara. Say hi, Kara. <laughs> right, we're out. <laughs>